Namaste and welcome to this exciting episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Satology means science of truth, the study of truth, opposite of that is mythology, which means science or study of fake lie or imagination. And that's how most of the histories of the ancient histories of the world are branded as mythology when or for many reasons, maybe academic reasons, maybe political reasons, or purely Eurocentric uh, reasons also. But anyway, we are not into politics. We're just discussing history and philosophy. So I have very, my now become a good friend and an author of multiple books. And I'm going to pick up one of his books and one the chapter. I just showed you the book before, UFOs and the, and the Pioneers of Oneness by Gerard Artsen. So let us welcome him. Welcome to the show, Gerard. Thank you, Adi. Thank you for having me back. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Gerard, the oneness principle in the world is oftentimes used as a political weight by many people. But in the terms of philosophy and culture, oneness is a universal principle because the humanity shares many, many common things with each other, with the plants, with the animals, birds, insects. It's a, like a mutually dependent world where we can't live without bees, we can't live without birds, we can't live without insects, we can't live without animals and fishes. So, so where do you want to, what is your idea about oneness? Well, you know, we can't even live without clean water or clean air. Um, and um, when we are intricately connected as a, as a living organism, which by now is accepted scientific, scientific fact. Um, but it goes much deeper. Uh, the oneness of life and the oneness of the universe has been established uh, by quantum science by now, quantum research, um, which, and, and, you know, I'm not a quantum physicist, so... Uh, I'm not going to go into real specifics in that in that respect, but but generally speaking, um, because I, I would be out of my depth if, if I if I would uh, uh, start trying to explain the uh, the quantum uh, view of reality. But but uh, generally speaking, um, according to um, theoretical physics and and the quantum view of reality. There is no such thing as um, as uh, uh, matter to begin with. Um, what we see as matter, as the objective reality, which we which we experience as separate things, uh, separate items, uh, and and separate people, you separate from me, um, are in fact connected at the deepest possible level beyond the dimension of space time. Um, in a sea of coherent vibrations. We are all floating in the sea of, of consciousness, as one writer called it. Um, and uh, it's not just that we're floating in it, but we are all connected in, this, in even in the sense that um, if, and this is according to, to physics, if something happens to a certain particle uh, on one side of the universe, it affects uh, another particle on the other side of the universe instantly, without any any time delay. So that it's it's. I think the principle is known as entanglement, and and uh, famous Einstein referred to it as uh, spooky action at a distance because he couldn't in his when when he had developed his theories to the point that he had when when this was first proposed, um, he couldn't explain it yet. But uh, nowadays, it's it's an accepted fact in, in science. So the oneness of uh, of life of, of the world of the universe is a is a is f fundamental to existence. And the importance is you said you know we're not talking about politics, but um, you know this oneness will shine through in everything we do, either. If, if we if we choose to ignore it, we will find conflict around us. We will find ourselves and 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 enmeshed in conflict, as we see in the world today, because we are disregarding nature. We we are disregarding 
um, disenfranchised uh, people in other parts of the world. We are disrupting the natural flow of, of goods, of food, of healthcare, of technological know-how. Um, we're, we, you know, we're storing it up. We're trying to keep as much of it for ourselves to make profit or whatever. And, um, you know, that undermines the oneness uh, of life. And, and that bounces back at you. You know, what comes around goes around. Or karma in Eastern uh, uh, terminology. Yeah. My book is, yeah, karma is a bitch. So That too. It so can I, be. And anyway, it's an it's a American slang. So mm. they use it to abuse somebody else. But, uh, but it's pretty practical. Now, you have mentioned Cameron in the UFO researcher. And you said consciousness is the elephant in the room when it comes to full disclosure. And I like that line. And you know the the, the you know consciousness. Everyone is a conscious being, so you don't have to have somebody else tell you that you are conscious because you're living, you're feeling, you're thinking, you're talking, you're walking. So that means you are using your body for something else. And when when you leave the body, the body is dead. So exactly the whole concept of you know, the, and if nobody has lived beyond 150 years in modern experience. 150, I said, because some places there are exceptions, like in Japan, mm. some places, there are exceptions. Also in Scandinavian countries, 112, 120 years is very normal sometimes for people to live. So now, when you, when somebody says uh, in the UFO research, and also you have quoted the Laszlo Institute for New Paradigm Research, uh, Erwin Laszlo, and other there. Where the paradigm, so this paradigm, when we talk about the consciousness, so when when you're doing a UFO research, so what is this new paradigm then, according to you? Um, according to me, the new paradigm is, um, and and I've I started exploring that in in the the final chapter of uh, UFOs and pioneers of oneness, uh, but I've worked it out. Uh, more specifically um, and succinctly in um, in my latest book, which uh, we mentioned last time, um, the new paradigm, not only in ufology, but in life in general, is the fact that we must begin to treat others the way we ourselves want to be treated. And uh, we, uh, you know, and this also begin is beginning to um, catch on among uh, cultural philosophers, uh, sociologists, etc. We cannot expect to survive in a world that is heavily armed to the teeth uh, with even nuclear weaponry um, if we continue to insist on on living separately and and treating the other as a potential enemy. Um, unless we begin to cooperate. Uh, for the general good, for the common good, um, and rebuild our world, restructure our world, um, we will we will compete ourselves into oblivion. You know that's that's the way of the world at the moment, and and that's based on the old paradigm, um, which has come out of say um, habits of say two thousand years of the previous age in, in Western astrological terms, the age of Pisces, um, in which humanity has acquired the qualities, generally speaking, of course, not everyone, the qualities of individuality and, and idealism. You know, and, and we find those in the stories of Jesus of Nazareth in the New, in the New Testament, um, where he uh, challenges the authority of uh, of the uh, religious leaders of the time and and in a way teaches people to think for themselves um, you know and that we are all unique individuals uh, which is an invaluable aspect of our lives um, you know it's not uh, the oneness doesn't mean that we all need to be the same and, and think the same and dress the same etc it's not about uniformity it's about unity and the other um, quality of the past age that humanity has acquired, again, in general terms, is idealism. And um, that was reflected in, in the story of Jesus, in his willingness to die for his convictions, for his beliefs, um, and, and you know, the willingness of um, many of his disciples. And both of these um, 
individuality and idealism have become crystallized. You know, like everything in nature, something comes up, a seed sprouts, and it blossoms, and it comes into full bloom, and it decays. Um, that's a natural way of things. It's the same with, with galaxies, uh, and the same in nature, and uh, the same with, uh, with individual incarnations. You know, we, we, uh, we are born, we grow up, and, and we live a full life, hopefully, and, and we uh, grow old and die. So these two qualities have become crystallized to the point where um, individuality has um well we, we saw the um, um you know the individuality has become um a um a, a, a way of thinking in in uh, in uh, well, the current atmosphere of neoliberalism where it's you know um everything for me trying to get as much as you can for yourself uh, take for yourself what whatever you can uh, regardless of whether you have too much already and somebody else is lacking. And idealism um, has crystallized into all forms of terrorism, religious terrorism, political terrorism, economic terrorism, um, not the willingness to die for your beliefs, but to kill others for your belief. You know, so those two qualities, which are, which are indispensable for, you know, full, full human experience, uh, are now getting in our way. And it's not that we have to get rid of individuality or idealism, but we have to put them in the right place. We have to recognize that they serve a, a greater goal. And um, in order to survive as a human race and, and even as planets, to survive as a planetary species and to help our planetary home to, to um, remain and, and sustainable and 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 allow us to progress safely into the future, we have to uh, develop uh, a sense of unity and, and synthesis. Being aware of what it means to be an individual and, and the, the, the value of developing your own talents, individual talents, we now have to put that at the service of you know, humanity, no longer you know, at the service of merely our own self-interest or our family's interest or our nation's interest we have to put it at service of of uh, humanity as a whole the planet as a whole and start working together um towards a, a peaceful future towards justice for all and freedom for all you know we cannot have a world where only you can only be free when you have um five million dollars or up you know that's that's not freedom because then your freedom depends on the lack of freedom of millions of other people, and so freedom and justice they are in balance or none of them exists. Neither, neither exists. You know, and and according to me and and what I find from my studies and my research, the new paradigm is unity and synthesis, or at least those are the qualities of of the new paradigm. I'm going to a little bit digress here, a little bit, a uh, little bit. So if you look at the Native American history or the Native history all over the world, I mean, pretty insulated, self-dependent Native communities, all Native communities. And uh, and you belong to Netherlands, and it was the biggest and the most fierce colonial fighting machine. You know the history. Yes, of... rub it in, rub it in. I'm just digressing a little bit. No, no, no. Bring something else, okay? Uh, the the and I read in your book one of the which you mentioned over there. Uh, the the understanding, like if you look at the history of Indonesia, which is very closely connected to Dutch. Yes. And you also know Dutch East India Company was the biggest company in the world way before the English East India Company, British East India Company. And it had it is said that it is the richest company ever existed on the planet. Mm. And uh, and uh, in terms of financial resources and wealth. And we still see those traces in USA, Asia, and some parts of uh, India is not there much because the British replaced them. But we still see in Indonesia in a big way. Because Indonesia was 
also connected. Some people thought that the spice trade is more lucrative in Indonesia than other places. And the Mughal emperor Jahangir IV actually traded with Dutch East India Company. Mm -hmm. And for few, you know, some, bad to say here, but women and wealth. Like he was getting chocolates, coffees from Dutch and women. That's what he was getting. And cloth. Really? Yeah. That's uh -huh. the only thing he got. That's how it was bribed. And he opened the Calcutta port in India for the Dutch East India Company. Right, yes. And that's why the British made Calcutta as the capital because it was already trading. Now, question why I said digression is that don't you think that now that the world is more now everybody can search on the Google and you correctly mentioned that individuality doesn't matter more. I mean it is important, but it is also not that important where somebody's well being is threatened. You correctly said that. And but this is, we are speaking in the postmodern kind of philosophy, like after the fact, after the fact that it is being controlled all over the world. And generally, the most of the academics and in the mainstream, we discussed last time a little bit, in the mainstream campuses, academic system, there is no sufficient recognition or healing part of it, it is missing in the textbooks. Like I was reading reading one line of yours on the Persian side. You said the Aryans were Persians. Uh, and Parsik is a Sanskrit word actually from where the Greeks called it because they used to add A in everything. Hindu became India and mm. and Pars Parsik became Persia. This is a Greek word. But these were all Alexander when he invaded Persia, he thought he has invaded India. He has conquered India. But he could not cross the today's Pakistan, which is there. Pakistan is today where the Alexander reached. Now, a lot of the native history from the world's perspective itself is completely different from a vision from Europe. Completely different. So the in the Eastern philosophy, or uh, mostly Eastern when you mean the primary is India generally, but the when you say there, then the body, mind, and soul are three different aspects. I'm not even going to Aristotelian, Socrates, Plato, because confusion happened over there, where yeah. the, the syncretism and all those things they developed uh, from those philosophies. So how do you see when people cannot distinguish between these three separate items altogether? Because in the Eastern philosophy, mind is material, intelligence is material, but the soul is is spiritual. It doesn't belong to this world. It means it belongs everywhere and to this world also, not just here. So how do you put the oneness principle when these three things are completely different? I want to hear your perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, see, I, I think um, you cannot really separate uh, one thing from the other. Consciousness cannot function on an individual level without a body in the three-dimensional world. A body in the three-dimensional world would not exist if it were not for the individual consciousness having incarnated in it um, and, and, and directed it to grow from the embryo in, in the womb uh, and, and grow on uh, after, after birth. Um, so I think it may be yeah, I, I would see it as a slight misconception to see the body as completely separate. It is um, the farthest. I mean, if, if you think of consciousness as involving itself in matter um, to the point where, you know, we all have our individual bodies um, and, uh, you know, and, and discrete objects around us uh, can be moved around, etc. They're not, you know, part of the uh, uh, literally... Uh, attached to to the ground on which they stand, um, uh, you know the the um, uh, consciousness precedes either the notion, the concept of a table or a chair, or a tree, or a blade of grass, or a human being, the body of a human being, um, and so it it is really all connected. You know the the um, um, the 
um, consciousness aspect gets denser and denser and denser as it involves itself further and further into matter. You know, uh, mental matter uh, is much subtler, much more subtle than uh, dense physical matter. And so is the astral or emotional matter. Uh, but they are still seen correctly, I think, as matter from, from the Eastern perspective. But uh, dense, uh, dense physical matter is no less spiritual because it wouldn't exist if it weren't uh, uh, conceived, hadn't been conceived by, uh, by this divine mind, cosmic consciousness. So I see it all as one, but on its own, in its own, let's say, stratum in the ocean of consciousness. So in the, in the three-dimensional world where we live and experience our existence, uh, you know, this is clearly, it seems, when we send probes out to, onto other planets around us, our planet is clearly the most densely physical in terms of uh, where life manifests, where consciousness manifests through carbon-based uh, life forms, um, but that doesn't mean it is, you know, and it's and it's certainly um, when you would say, well, you know, it's all ephemeral, it's all not real, it's all just a shadow of the underlying consciousness. I would agree uh, because it is, and it's not lasting, it's not eternal. Uh, but you no, know, nothing is eternal in that sense. Uh, planets are not eternal, and and the only thing eternal, of course, is the is the the divine seed the the atman or the brahman or the you know that 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 particle of of divine consciousness that has involved itself in matter does that answer your question yes i mean i i mean see the you know the if you look at the like the you must have read the science of Guna also because you have read Vedas. You know Guna very well. I, no, no, please let me correct you. I, I don't claim that I've read the Vedas. I'm familiar with them. I, mean, and I, I think I, I mentioned last time that I've, you know, I've I've read some parts of it in, in some works, but um, I haven't read the Vedas. I wouldn't dare to, uh, to claim that. Yeah, you have quoted many references. Like one of the things which you quote was the Persia and Arya. Arya is... The Sanskrit word Arya is not the name of a race. Sanskrit word Arya no. is a name of civilized person, like a gentleman, mm -hmm. like who follows Veda. It's not a race. That's where the most of the Eurocentric commentators or writers, they're mistaken because of the Max Muller's faulty translation. That's why I said they do not understand what they're speaking mm -hmm. sometimes. And uh, the Aryan, I mean, Hitler was again think, thinking from a European point of view. Max Muller was a German sponsored by an Italian, hired by a British intelligence. Three things combined. It was a, what do you call it, double spy? What do you call it? The dual works on both sides. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of them. So, so in now, in, in you have quoted many quotations of different scholars, actually. And one of the things you mentioned that the ageless wisdom teaching, the history of humanity on this planet goes back 18.5 million years. Now, there was a, a human skeleton discovered in Europe, uh, which is almost 700,000 years old. It was discovered in 1950. And uh, and it was discovered that now the entire from Africa origin, out of Africa origin is being questioned now. Yes, it's challenged. It yeah. Is, is questioned and it's not true that all because otherwise I would be expecting most of Europeans to have African features, which is not there, you know. So, so it's been questioned. Now, the the you also just now in the last question you mentioned that uh, you cannot separate the body, mind, and consciousness completely away. Uh, you have to think of a totality. Yes, in a human experience, yes. You know, I cannot speak to a person who has no mind. I cannot speak to a person who has no intelligence. Yes, but still, when a person dies, then the body is dead. Body is still there. Yes, the mind is not there intelligence cannot function because somebody has left the body very clearly that somebody is called soul and which left the body atman atman, yes. atman and atma like what do you call it 
So my question to you, based on your book, is that uh, in the Atlantean period, achievement but a gift from gods, where the technology available. So you are trying to establish a point that the that consciousness is a common factor between us and the extraterrestrials. Absolutely, because as again, again, you know, we live in a sea of consciousness and life. In, in my understanding, and I accept, you know, uh, that my understanding also is, is uh, limited. Um, but I try to bring together uh, different strands, different uh, strands of research, different uh, disciplines, scientific disciplines, and, and also other disciplines, and look for uh, the things that they have in common, the things that they agree on. Um, and uh, doing that, uh, I, I see that... Um, 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 I'm sorry. I lost. <laughs> I lost the. Uh, I lost the question. The consciousness is common across us and the extraterrestrials. The extraterrestrials. Yes, that, that's where we were. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, and and uh, living in a sea of consciousness, um, and life being a manifestation of let's co say cosmic consciousness or divine consciousness it's uh, it follows that consciousness is not limited to carbon based life forms that we know here on on, on earth um, uh, a planet could be seen as a manifestation of consciousness but on a different level a solar system likewise can be seen as a manifestation of consciousness but it's still a higher level um, and those planetary heavenly bodies um, have their own life cycles where life manifests um, in uh, through through consciousness um, expressing clearly not in dense physical forms as we are that we are familiar with um, but probably on in, in uh, more subtle physical uh, forms uh, which is what you know um, what some of the uh, contactees that I've also quoted contactees from the 1950s have experienced where um, uh, the people that they saw coming out of spaceships and that contacted them they would see disappear um, into thin air and likewise you know uh, there were many stories and many accounts of people who saw, a spaceship appear out of nowhere or disappear into into seemingly nothingness, and and that is to so that is to do with uh, with the uh, change in phase between the dense physical and the, and the subtle physical or the etheric physical, and it's my contention uh, based on my research and my studies that life on the on the other planets um, uh, that we've been able to uh, to visit and send probes to um, manifests in in subtle etheric, uh, subtle uh, physical um, uh, forms, which for for the greatest part for now um, falls outside our range of vision. And um, you know, when you have a, a cat or a dog, you will know that they sometimes see things. They get startled by something, and it's not a sound, but something that they see. And and it's invisible to us, you know. And um, uh, there are also um, various scientific uh, experiments that have that have been uh, undertaken through the years. Um, and of course, they have been uh, debunked by by traditional mainstream science. But for instance, Rupert Sheldrake, the uh, British uh, uh, biologist. Um, speaks of uh, morphogenetic genesis um, and and uh, what he called them again he, he called them a kind of um, um, uh, memory banks of nature where he even with physical physical forms like uh, frog embryos or something like fish embryos I don't remember um, they uh, he he showed that um, there's a, a kind of memory at play from which nature retrieves its forms and and uh, to me that's that seems to indicate uh, that there's uh, you know a higher level of reality of still physical reality that we are unaware of 
you know, in, in, in new age terms, people would call them etheric bodies, um, et cetera. Um, and, um, you know, they, they're often confused with the astral bodies of, uh, of, of ghosts, for instance. Um, but the etheric physical is really like the, vi- the vital body. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's on that, on that plane of matter, those planes of matter, according to the Aces Wisdom teaching, there are four planes of matter above the, the gaseous. We know the dense physical and, and the liquid physical and the um, gaseous physical. According to the Aces Wisdom teachings, there are four further planes of matter, um, which it calls the, the etheric planes of matter. And, um, uh, you know, again, these are, uh, in, in descending order from, from the highest etheric to the dense physical are, uh, the strata in the, in the physical plane on, uh, of, of the, uh, of the cosmos. Above that, you have the, the astral planes, also seven, seven, um, sub, subdivisions. Above that, you have the mental planes. And above that, you, you know, the spiritual planes uh, begin for seeing from, from down here from our uh, perspective. Um, and, and so it goes up and this repeats throughout the universe. And we don't know where the end is because, you know, we are at the lowest end of the manifestation of, of cosmic consciousness and we can only see so far. And we can't even see the, uh, the more subtle uh, planes of, of matter around us. Um, so, uh, yes. And, and, extraterrestrial life to come back to your question extraterrestrial life again is my contention exists on i would say every planet that it has evolved to the point where it can you know sustain um um you know the kingdoms in nature um in in its own uh, in its own planetary atmosphere um and eventually a human kingdom will will crop up will show up uh, not necessarily exactly, uh, you know, the same forms that humanity has on this planet, but very, very similar. You know, the human form is, is universal, as we've been told, with a trunk and, and four limbs and a head and, and uh, you know, a pair of eyes, a pair of no- uh, ears, etc. Um, and these exist on, as far as I'm aware, all all the planets in our solar system, including Venus and Mars and, and Jupiter, Saturn. Uh, except we don't see them because they don't exist on in carbon-based forms on the dense physical planes, but in the uh, in the uh, etheric planes of matter. I mean the 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 information from uh, Vedic point of view is completely sim- very simple actually, very simple. And you correctly mentioned that uh, yes, you cannot see them. So my question is, who went to the moon and found rocks only over there? Um, it's, uh, was it, uh, was it John Glenn or was he the first, uh, was he, the, no, he was the first, I suppose, to, um, um, uh, to orbit the earth. Um, I don't remember the, um, uh, Armstrong, Armstrong. Armstrong, yeah. He stepped on the moon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Apollo 11 mission. Yeah. I won't go into any of those controversies there because this is not the purpose of the show. You can check. There's no contra- controversy. You know, people went to the moon, they landed there, they brought back some rocks. No, we have uh, except they of, didn't. We have they say they didn't see anything, but there are there are reports actually that what the astronauts reported seeing has been suppressed. Uh, apparently, they saw some some craft there that were not from Earth, and. Again, my contention is that when we see UFOs, for instance, whether it's in the atmosphere here or in space or on the surface of the moon, it's only because the occupants of the of the of the uh, UFO, the flying saucer or the spacecraft, have uh, allowed the the vi- rate of vibration of the of the molecules of their ship or their bodies, if it's them personally. Uh, to lower to um, uh, uh, frequency where it falls into our range of vision. No, we, I was just saying from the audience perspective that the you know I don't I don't I'm part I'm not part of any conspiracy kind of theories or anything. So the audience may think of something as not went to the moon or went to the moon. I leave it to the audience. Okay, so that's what I was. 
The questions are yes, and up. I was just expressing my personal, uh, 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 you know, knowledge of the facts. Yes. So now you mentioned that the consciousness is universal, and for the audience, it will be really helpful because we start seeing things in a different way, and the the our vision is limited. We cannot see in the night. We cannot see certain things which animals can see or perceive. We our our senses are limited. We cannot see many things. So if we cannot see many things, and and what we see with our eyes gets translated with our brain and with our bodily functions and our mind into creating some sort of an image. Now, from this perspective, we start moving ahead. Now, if we cannot see anything, then how can the cameras that we invent, we can see something from there? Because we ourselves cannot process it. Uh, are you are you are you asking about yeah. infrared cameras? Yeah, any cameras, like any cameras. Like I I cannot see many things through infrared cameras. Yes, I can see some things in the dark. Hot bodies moving. Mm -hmm. I can see that, but I cannot see them clearly. Like even if you look at no. the military images, at the night vision goggles, you cannot see things clearly. But you no. see the blobs moving on the screen, red blobs, whatever yeah, colors yeah. they have given the digital thing. So uh, that we can we can see that because it's translated for our eyes. So if people are not moving, so we are assuming that the space suits have those infrared goggles or something like that to see them, things as they are. Now, if the life exists everywhere, mind must also be existing. Like what we called as mind, they must be calling something else, but it does exist everywhere. Intelligence also exists somewhere because they are coming in a beautiful airships. They must be having manufacturing facilities for them too. And they must be having some advanced engineering also because they are interpreting things as they are. And 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 then they are coming in. So what is the scientific discovery on that side? The scientific discovery? Mm. Um, I'm not sure. Um, um, see, what I, what I what I've established through um, you know, again, through studying uh, the, the sources that I consider reliable, um, um, it's clear that uh, through contacts and, and several deliberate, I, I, I consider them deliberate UFO crashes, um, sp specifically in, the 19, in 1947, but there have been others. Um, you know, uh, human scientists, governments, military uh, agencies have um, got into possession of of extraterrestrial technology, and uh, um, and and you're right. You know, they uh, uh, intelligence and mind they are universal parts, elements of the manifestation of life. Um, here as everywhere else in, in the universe. Um, and uh, the extraterrestrial visitors that are allowed to enter our planetary sphere um, for now, because we are in a very difficult m uh, time of transition for our planet, um, they have not only, you know, uh, very highly uh, uh, developed uh, technology, uh, which I think is a is an a, again a manifestation of their high higher level of consciousness, higher level of awareness, high level of ethics and morals, um, which uh, sets them apart from us and and actually uh, sets them um, at a at a level where they could be our teachers, and in in many ways they have been our teachers, and through for instance those UFO crashes, um, they have left behind technology uh, which scientists have then you know taken apart trying to back engineer reverse engineer and uh, it's been rather well documented that for instance the, uh, the touch screen technology that is so ubiquitous at the moment uh, with our smartphones and, and the tablets etc um, was developed from uh, the uh, uh, the crashed uh, craft um, that had been retrieved 
Um, and likewise, um, before the the, uh, the touchscreen technology, transistors that revolutionized uh, our computer technology. Um, so, you know, in that sense, they've also uh, helped us in ways that the vast majority of, of humanity is not even aware of. Um, and uh, of course, because we are, you know, we are still to take that step in, in moral um um moral awareness that we are one one human race and should not be competing but uh, but cooperating um which makes a higher level of technology very dangerous in our hands because you know if if we would have the actual technology that that the space visitors have in their craft we could you know, blow each other up with with light beams, and or, or or even destroy the planets. We can destroy the planet with nuclear weapons, but that's still very physical uh, physical um, uh, energy. Um, so uh, you know, they haven't given us everything because we can't be trusted with it yet. We first need to realize. See, it's that that principle of oneness that we've been talking about. It's we are a manifestation of it, but we also need to let it become part of our daily daily experience, our daily awareness, and begin to put it into practice. Look after each other. Be our brother's keeper. You know, our, we are one, not only as a, as, a, as a theoretical concept or as a scientific, um, uh, yeah, a, a scientific uh, theory, uh, we are one in the, in the most real sense of the world, of the word, and and uh, we need to begin to uh, to express that, manifest that in the way we live, in the way we organize society on this planet, or else we'll blow ourselves up into smithereens. Yeah, the the Sanskrit word for human is manushya. That's the Sanskrit word for it, and it is like you know in the there is a very deep divide between the Western way of logic and reasoning and the eastern way of logic and reasoning completely different uh, like uh, uh, the many of the terms like you mentioned the seven layers and you mentioned in your book also all those things and those layers in 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 the vedic philosophy is completely different and science i would say because most of the entire yoga is based on that is that the three levels of the body are sukshma Stool and Atman, three layers. And then gradually from Stool, Stool means the body, uh, which is made of blood, bile, mucus, all these things are there in the body, covered with a skin, beautiful looking skin. But inside the skin, everybody has the same color, which is red. And, uh, and then you have the mind, intelligence, and the false ego, which is Ankar. And the third is the Atman level, the three levels. Now, the, and the, that's where the body, the whole yoga practice is from raising your awareness or because you cannot raise consciousness. I mean, you, consciousness remains the same all the time. And there's also an, a, a, what do you call it? The, the, the consciousness is always pure. Atman is always pure. So then the, the guna work, the three modes of nature work on the mind and body to produce different kind of emotions and actions. And that's why morning time is important, Brahmurta. Daytime is for work, evening is for rest. Like it, this is very simple, but very profound that you cannot change it mm -hmm. much. Now, when you say the seven layers of consciousness or the traversing the mind, now, in the philosophy, they are called seven planetary systems above Earth and seven below. And now, when you say below and above, now for most of the, there are, I see a lot of discussion between flat Earthers and round Earthers. I don't want to get into that because that is a outside the scope of this discussion and also not my way of thinking because it's a, it's, it's a different discussion altogether. But the the seven layers above and there are progressions based on your karma now these like you correctly said that these people have more technology and purposely the humans are not given all the technology that means somebody is managing the universal affairs 
somebody is behind the whole thing that you guys don't destroy this planet. You have more advanced technology. You can send a beam from there. But we see all the Hollywood movies talking about destruction of this earth by terrestrial, extraterrestrials. Is it the is it like a in in your community of writers and and the scientific community? Is it like a some kind of a propaganda going on? This earth is going to be because I see the earth getting destroyed more by humans than anyone else. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Um, it's it's only us who's destroying it, you know. And if if extraterrestrial hostile races were interested in in taking over enslaving humanity or getting this planet out of uh, out of its orbit and, and be, by blowing it up you know they could have done so millia millennia ago so all that is just simple you know um rather narrow-minded uh, uh, fantasy on the part of of um, yeah rather small-minded humans who don't have much understanding of of uh, the cosmic nature and and the oneness you know and and cosmic law you know where everything that happens in the universe happens under law and it's it's not the wild west in the universe it's all very regulated it's not that there's one person a personal god who's pulling all the strings and now this person this individual does that and that individual does that and i have them play uh, play out wars and kill them kill them you know kill each other it's uh, that's a very childish uh, way of, of looking at it and and i would like to come back to a comment you made you know about it's not possible to raise consciousness no it's not because you know consciousness is and, and, and but we have to distinguish, I think, between individual consciousness incarnated in the human personality, which is temporary, you know, and will will be different. Your 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 soul will be incarnated in, in, in next time in a diff with a different personality, and different looks, perhaps a different uh, a different sex or a different race, um, and um, so the distinction between the individual consciousness and the cosmic consciousness means and and we because we are incarnated we incarnate in, in the human body and the body limits our awareness you know if 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 our consciousness was pure as we are incarnate we would all be buddhas enlightened buddhas or or you know krishnas or um, anyone you you prefer but we are not you know, and the whole the whole process of incarnation, reincarnation, and, and the laws of reincarnation and the laws of karma are um, are operating so that we have cycle after cycle in which our our personal individual awareness of of consciousness um, on the path of evolution back to the source will gradually expand and we begin to realize oh wait there's not just this physical aspect of me there's also a spiritual aspect of me and then we begin to contact the soul through puja or through meditation and uh, you know that will take many years to uh, many lifetimes i should say um to establish a, a solid contact and maybe some lifetimes in monasteries you know who knows um, and at some point that contact is really steady and, and we continue to grow in that awareness and this reconnecting of our individual consciousness through physical incarnation with the source of consciousness, you know, that's where the word, and I think I mentioned that last time, the word religion, religar, reconnect, comes from the same as the Sanskrit word, yoga. So, you know, and and that's that's I think that's an important uh, uh, point thing to point out uh, that no consciousness yes that's that's universal, but it also individualizes and and takes incarnation, um, and uh, you know and and through that um, through our limited awareness while we are in incarnation and the and the fights that we have with other people with other. Uh, individual aspects of, of uh, universal consciousness in a, in a separate body. Through our fights, we learn gradually from our mistakes and, and we uh, we begin to build families, nations, etc. Planets eventually. And when when 
uh, a planetary race comes together finally, um, it will be able to to travel to the stars and and discover and and uh, meet with with other planetary races. And we are at this time, according to the Ages Wisdom teachings, at a time in our history where we are about to make that step. And either we take that step, become one human family, and we realize we are one human family and begin to manifest as such, or we destroy ourselves. We will not be allowed to destroy the planet, but you know, we may, if we shall choose, we might de destroy humanity and, and some, some other kingdoms in nature, but the planet will take care of itself and it will grow back. But we will be set back millions and millions of years in our evolution. And, and start from very, very primitive uh, circumstances again. So the attempt of destroying this earth has been made many times in the past, not just that today's society has tried it, but before also people have tried. It's not that it has been done just new we are seeing. And also the the Yoga Chitta Vritti, because I'm the author of Yoga Sutra, so I have translated Yoga Sutra from Sanskrit to English for Americans and the Western audience, where is the simple the the halting of vritti of the mind is called yoga and the uh, yoga means to connect uh, like you said reconnect correctly you said connect atma to paramatma that's the whole process of yoga in between and then the ishwar pranidhan comes in either there now these are some yogis will understand what i'm talking about people who have read yoga sutra now the the Again, coming back and before we wrap up this show, because we're already on the top of the hour now. And so the so when we say the again coming back to the extraterrestrials and the consciousness, and you purposely mentioned the word enlightenment, I would like to discuss that in some other show because it's a totally different matter altogether. Like the if the consciousness I don't think it's a different matter, but it's you know it's part of the process <laughs> that we're involved in. Yeah, but it's a, it requires a whole new discussion altogether. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, it, it cannot be just in the show. But just you mentioned enlightenment and then how we can become enlightened and Buddha was enlightened. enlightened, and So this is again the concept of uh, uh, the... See, the, we also established in our discussion, you agreed with me, that the consciousness doesn't change. It It is constant. It is one thing which is constant. That means... Like if you have a clean glass of water, like I have here, hot water, if I put red color in it, it becomes red. But if I remove the red color, it comes back to its original state. Yes. So we don't have to. Uh, so the whole process of enlightenment is something else. Now, discussing the extraterrestrials and different things. So they also be carrying the same consciousness because they are coming here. They are interacting with us. That means there is some common connection, something common. They are in the same universe. Same they universe. are a product of the same universal consciousness. They, they may be speaking a different language, but that's a, just a tool of communication. Yes. And they may be speaking yeah. different language. Yeah. And there, can, there are ways. If I am speaking a different language, I can communicate with you and you can communicate with me. The same logic applies anywhere else too. That we can yes. communicate in a different language. Probably yeah. we are not able to speak their language. And they are also being stopped from affecting life on this earth. And also somebody is stopping us from destroying each other also. You know, because most of the UFOs are seen over the nuclear, even the balloon, Chinese balloon mm -hmm. came over yeah. the nuclear sites. So the the point Well, is, I don't know if the Chinese balloons were Chinese or... I know they were not extraterrestrial. <laughs> I know. Nobody knows. Even Americans don't know. Because $20 hobby balloon was shot down by $400,000 missile. So we don't... <laughs> it's sad. Anyway, we are we are having the UFO weekends. So we are enjoying ourselves on UFO weekends. We don't know which part of the game will be played now. So my last point and before we end, end of the show. So what do you think is the best way to look at extraterrestrials from the oneness point of view? They are our brothers and sisters from space. Awesome. That's it. It's simple as that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gerard. And viewers, you thank I you, Adi. I showed his book in the in the in the first part of the show, the UFOs and the pioneers of oneness. 
check out with his name, Gerard Artson on Amazon and other places and, and let me know your feedback. And on this discussion as well, and and uh, we'll continue our discussion. I, he gave me some good pointers on enlightenment. So we'll discuss that in the next show. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much.